Hello, everyone. Welcome to our talk. My name is Raul, and here we have my colleague Victor. We both work at Swiss Air Rancher, and today we're going to talk about how to enforce a secure supply chain on Kubernetes. So let's start defining what's a supply chain. A supply chain is everything that's needed to deliver your product. In terms of software, that means your source code, how you build this code into artifacts, where these artifacts are stored. And in the case of Kubernetes, you're probably building uh, container images on a CI-CD pipeline. So that's why, what we need to, to secure. And uh, if you look at this picture, we took it from the, oh, actually you cannot see the full picture, but <laughs> that's right. But we took it from the Salsa framework. Um, if you start from the left, you have the source integrity. First thing, we need to make sure it's our source code is protected and no one has access to our source code and pushes some malicious code. And then on the right hand side, we have uh, the build integrity, which is the part we're going to focus on today. We want to make sure to, that what we build from our source code is what we really see in our production cluster. And for that, what we're going to do is we're going to assign our images in our build pipelines, and then we're going to verify these container images inside of our Kubernetes uh, cluster. So let's start talking about signing. And for signing, let me introduce Sisto, which is a combination of technologies to handle signing and verification. This technology uh, includes uh, Cosign, which is the tool we use for signing. Then we have Fulcio, which is a certificate authority we use for issuing certificates. And then we have RICO. RICO is a transparency log. Think of it uh, as, a as a ledger, where you can put some records, but you cannot modify or delete any record. And anyone can query this record for, for verification. In addition to container images, you can sign almost anything. It's a binary blob. You can also sign any OCI artifacts, such as um, WASA modules, hem charts. Um, we're seeing a lot of adoption. A lot of people are starting to use Sisto. Even Kubernetes itself is started signing all their artifacts uh, with Sisto, starting on version 124. That means that you can verify not just your own images. You can also verify third-party images if they're using Sisto. And we can see a lot of people, in, at least in the open source community, using Sisto. OK, so let's talk a bit about signing. There are two ways of signing. Uh, one is the, the keeper. You can, it's a traditional approach. You can create a, co a keeper with cosign. You can even bring your own keeper. But yeah, you need to keep your key secure, your private key secure, and then you need to distribute the pu public key for verification. And then there is a new way, which is called keyless. It's not actually keyless using ephemeral keys. It's still experimental, but we find it very interesting. So yeah, let's talk more about uh, this keyless workflow. So for keyless, uh, it uses OpenID for authentication. OpenID is uh, an identity layer built on top of OAuth2. And it allows uh, clients to verify the identity of an end user using an authorization provider. So the way uh, Sigstore uses that, it's uh, in, uh, when you try to create a new certificate, you request the certificate to Fulcio. You pass it an OIDC token. Fulcio says, OK. You are who you say you are. Then it generates an ephemeral certificate, a short list certificate. You use this certificate for signing. You sign your image. Then you store this signature in an OCI registry and then also in the records transparency log. So you can later on verify this signature in the records transparency log without the need of a public key. So you don't need to, to distribute a public key. It also has a great support for, for automated environments. So we can integrate it in our pipelines. So. Let's see an example of uh, signing. This is how you would sign using a keyless if you use it, if you do it in your terminal. You type a cosign sign in your container image, and then you are redirected to, to your OIDC provider. You have to log in. Once you log in, uh, Pulcho will create a certificate. You will use the certificate for signing. Um, everything happens transparently, so you don't see any certificate at all. And then for verification, you just need to type cosign verify. And as you can see there, the issuer and the subject. That's what you use for verification. In this case, it's the email, the email we used um, for authenticating to this OIDC provider. And the issuer was GitHub. That's what we use for as an OIDC provider. So yeah, this is how you would do it in your local computer, but it's not great because it requires some human interaction. So it has great support for, for pipelines. 
It has automatic support for uh, GitHub Actions and uh, Google Cloud, but it could integrate with any other system if you pass an identity token as a flag to cosign. But as you can see here, this is a GitHub Action. This is a, a job, and you are, we are not even fetching any OIDC token. That's because Cosign is smart enough to look, okay, say, ah, I'm inside the GitHub Action, so I will fetch the token, and I will pass it to Fulcho to generate the certificate. We obviously have to um, give you permission to get the ID token, which will uh, allow you to, to get the OIDC token from GitHub. So, okay, we know, now we know how to sign our container images. We know how to verify them, but let's see how we can do that in Kubernetes using an admission controller. Uh, for that, I will hand over to Victor. So, uh, so we have seen the primer on, on SIGSTOR and Secure Supply Chain from Raul. And now, how do we implement that in a cluster? Well, we have here a cluster. You can see the, the first uh, blue box on top, that it's the cluster. You can see the happy users on the left, and then ATCD on the right, where everything gets uh, stored, and then the reconcilers of the cluster would just make it happen. And there's uh, a concept in Kubernetes which is called uh, a dynamic admission controller, which is what we see here. A dynamic admission control, uh, controller uh, in Kubernetes allows us to put some webhooks, for those that uh, don't know, and the we those webhooks connect to the, to the mutating uh, admissions and validating admissions when you make a request to the cluster, and allow you to check or modify that request. So for example, let's see a request here below. No, We have a JSON request, maybe it's a pod. We want just to instantiate the pod with one container inside. But we want that pod, um, th uh, to, uh, that, that pod to get an annotation called prod because we want to label all, all our pods, so we can just select them, select them and so on. We get the JSON request from, from Cube's uh, control, from the, from the user, it goes through authentication, so it's validated in that sense. Then it goes to uh, the mutating admission, where we have our own webhook, and then we mutate the, the JSON there, and we add an annotation with prod. Then it goes to schema validation, which, uh, checks the pod just to see if the JSON is correct, and then it goes to the validating admission where we see that the annotation was actually prod, which is what we want, because that's what we want in our cluster. Maybe our cluster only wants prod things. And then, yeah, it, it passes by, and it goes to a DCD, and that's it, it's in our cluster. So how does this tie no? with, with the whole thing that we were talking about? Uh, well, we need a, a policy engine. A policy engine, for example, could be Kubewarden, which is uh, a project, uh, open source project that we are working, and with that uh, open source project, which is the, the policy engine, we can enforce those uh, Sixter signatures and verification of those signatures. In this case, Kubewarden, it, as usual, it's just installed as Helm charts, um, open source, uh, with a community, we have submitted it to the CNCF, and so on. What's so interesting for, for this case of Kubewarden? Well, uh, apart from being a normal policy engine as others in the space, the policies in Kubewarden are WASM modules. What's WASM, you, 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 you say? Maybe you don't know WASM. Well, WASM, um, it's a, a binary uh, instruction format, so you just compile to it, as you would do with another architecture, so ARM and so on. Once you compile, it's super small, and it's secure, because it's, uh, comes from the uh, from the web browsing world, so it's a VM uh, with very minim minimum amount of, of uh, open things to the outside. Uh, you use it as a POSIX environment and so on. It's portable because there's a lot of uh, languages that compile to WASM. For example, uh, Rust, Go, Swift, TypeScript. You always you also has you also have. Uh, Domain-specific languages such as Rigo. If you know uh, in this space, maybe you know other policy engines. Engines you write the policies in Rigo. Maybe you like them. Maybe you don't like so much to write policies in Rigo. And that's the thing. By using Wasm, you can use your language. Maybe you already know your language. Maybe you want to use your own libraries. Maybe you want to use Git. Maybe you have already your CI set up for your language. Then that's it. And a policy is going to be super simple because it's just taking a JSON of maybe 300 lines, checking for some things in that JSON, and returning a, a, a Boolean. So if you know your language, it's uh, so, somewhat easy to do. Also, policies, as other policy engines, uh, can check uh, um, the, the state of the cluster, or can mutate, or, or so on. So how do we do this? How do we sign and verify uh, with Kubewarden and in CI? Well, Raul has already explained. If you do cosign sign of your container image, 
you can do the same with the policy, um, the policies from QWorden. Why? Because the policies are WASM modules, uh, and OCI registries support containers, Helm charts, and WASM modules as first class. So you just push your your policy to your container uh, registry and operate uh, operate as it, uh, with it as, as a normal container image. So you would do a cosine uh, sign and then cosine verify. It's the same in our case, for example, if you see this subject, it's gonna come from our organ organization if it's the, the policy that comes from us and then, then the, the tooling would check for those things. Of course, you need to uh, follow best practices. So there's little minute uh, detail that need to be followed to correctly verify the images. That's why, for example, QWorden provides uh, an abstraction layer where you just pass, okay, I want to verify things that come from GitHub Actions, and then the owner, the, the, the organization is gonna be QWorden, maybe the repository is gonna be another, another thing, and so on, and with that, you can just uh, verify the images. You would um, configure QWorden with that, with that uh, configuration, and that's it. Okay, now you have the policies, no, uh, trusted, and you have QWorden in the cluster, but you want to secure all the containers in the cluster, those that come from you, those that come from third parties, and so on, those that come from uh, Kubernetes itself, and so on. How do you do that? Well, you just write a policy and run the policy. In this case, for example, we can use the policy that we have written, but you could just write your own with the SDKs for the different languages that we have, and, and that's it. So a policy, for this case, it gets pods, no? Uh, it's gonna look at the containers that are inside. In this case, it's gonna be container, in the containers, and so on. You get the requests, what do you do? Uh, you check for the, for the signatures of those containers inside of the pod, and if they don't match, you reject. But you can also approve, no? I mean, if, they, if you have the, the signature correctly, you approve. But, ah, best practices again. Yeah, what happens if you get a container that it's, uh, the tag is 1.0? tags are mutable. You could just push uh, whatever app example 1.0 and then you can repush it again. So you need to be careful because you would lose information there. What you need to do then is to uh, verify and only instantiate in the cluster the digest that of the container that you have run. So you would just get your app example 1.0 and then append the example. Just to be sure that you are actually instantiating what you should. And how do we do that in the cluster? Well, for QWorden, it's just doing a kubectl apply of a policy, this policy. You can see it here, specs module the, the policy as an image, as a container image that you, would, that you would do. That's how a policy looks. And then you set it for uh, pods, create an update, and then you pass the, the configuration that you want. As we have talked, what happens if you instantiate uh, a pod and it verifies? Well, you do kubectl apply. And of course, it mutates the pod with the digest. You can see it below. You have the app example 0 0.1.0 and then uh, the shasham of the digest appended. So only gets to the cluster what should go there. And that's it for this uh, little, little explanation. What's next? Well, we have talked about um, our policies, our containers. But what about, what about our dependencies? No, everybody depends on something. Well, how do you handle dependencies? You handle them by a software bill of materials where your container comes with a list of what depends on other container uh, layers, uh, libraries, and so on. And with that, we take care of that problem. Uh, also, we need to sign and verify everything. Uh, this is a, a community effort, no? And a community problem. Everybody depends on something for whatever. So it really pays off to use something such as SIGSTORE, which comes from the Linux Foundation, and, and sign everything so we can depend on each other. And for QWorden specifically, we, we want to expand on those, on software bureau materials and so on, and on CI integration. We have shown uh, GitHub, but it can also work on GitLab or whatever the tool, whatever integration, and, and that's it. And yeah, that's it. How to get involved with us? Please just uh, stop us around, uh, find us maybe in the, in the sea of, of masks. And if you want to talk um, um, to us about QWorden and Secure Supply Chain or Sixtor, uh, we maintain some things on, on Upstream Sixtor, so we are happy to, to share our information and many thanks. Many thanks for your, for your attention. If you have any questions, please, please come by. <laughs>